Welcome to Social Allo Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God and exposing the devil. Now, based on the title, you may be wondering, what in the world is a prophetic clapback? Some of you may just be wondering, what in the world is a clapback? Now, a clapback is a sharp, witty response, such as trading an insult for an insult. So if someone insults you, you insult that person back in a manner that the person won't have anything else to say about you or to you. Um, like growing up watching martial arts movies, Bruce Lee would be in a fight, he'd get hit, and then he'd start bleeding and be like, and he'd give that person a look, and he, he knew it was trouble. Or, like Sanford and Son with Fred G. Sanford, and he would get into these verbal altercations with Esther, and he may call Esther ugly. And Esther would come back with something like, Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words never hurt me. That was a clapback to shut him down. In the case with a prophetic clapback, it works two ways. There are times when a person says something to or about a prophet, and a prophet responds with something that shuts the person down. But it's not always justified. Sometimes a prophet says something to the person to bring embarrassment. For example, the Lord lets the prophet know that the person has a, a struggle or a quote-unquote secret sin. And because the prophet gets offended, the prophet comes back and publicly states that thing, whether to the person or to a group, and the other, the other individual leaves embarrassed. There may be a time and place for that. But the other type of um, prophetic comeback or clapback is when a person says or does something to a prophet or someone else and a prophet gives a revelation that the person will not like. For example, Mecca I was minding his own business. Ahab wanted to go to battle. He conspired with Jehoshaphat to go to battle at Ramath Gilead. Ahab asked his 400 false prophets. Well, they all said, oh, go ahead, you'll be successful. Mecca I was minding his own business when Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, asked for a second opinion, so they went to go get Micaiah, even encouraged him to prophesy in accordance with, the, with what other prophets had said. But he wasn't having it. Now when Micaiah told the truth, they were offended. And for example, hmm, after Micaiah told the truth, in 1 Kings 22, starting verse 24, Then Zedekiah, the son of Chenaniah, came near and struck Micaiah on the truth. Struck him on the cheek. It's like the Bruce Lee move. Bad head move. So struck Micaiah on the cheek and said, How did the Spirit of the Lord pass from me to speak to you? So in this case, not only is Zedekiah mocking the prophet of the Lord, he's also mocking the Holy Spirit bad move. Now there are times when a prophet they will get insulted or someone will say something and then there are times where one of the worst things a prophet can do is to remain silent. But in this case Micaiah said Behold you shall see on the day on that day when you enter an inner room to hide yourself. So that was a prophetic clapback. Zedekiah think he was big and bad. He had prophesied something. Micaiah came and prophesied something different. Something that was actually from the Holy Spirit of the Lord. Zedekiah didn't like it. Hit Micaiah in his cheek and say, <laughs> Where is the Spirit of the Lord? Basically, let me read it again. How did the Spirit of the Lord pass from me to speak to you? Also, part of that is, and it's a good thing I read it, thank you, Lord. When Zedekiah said, how the Spirit of the Lord pass from me to speak to you, it was also implying that the Holy Spirit would speak to him first, as opposed to Micaiah. That's an example of pride. When Micaiah told him that he would find out on the day when he enters into an inner room to hide himself, 
Now Micaiah also prophesied to King Ahab that he was going to die in battle. And that's exactly what happened. And Ahab did not die instantly. He was shot with an arrow. So he had a while to die, a slow, painful death. Probably ruminating on those words that Micaiah told him, do not go to battle or you will die. Same thing with Micaiah. On the day that he hid himself, he remember, remembered um, slapping Micaiah and then receiving the prophetic clapback that you'll find out when you're hiding, trying to save your own life. But the master of the prophetic clapback is the master himself, Jesus. There are times when people approached him, usually, usually um, a Sadducee or Pharisee, and his response would be, have you not read? Which was an insult within itself. Or he'd say, it is written. And one of the ways Jesus showed that prophetic clapback is in Luke chapter 4, or Matthew chapter 4, where the devil tried tempting him. First try to get him turned stone to bread. Jesus' prophetic clapback was, man shall, live by, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil tried getting him to worship him. The Lord came back with another clapback. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only. Then the devil tried getting him to, Jesus to, jump off a high place and the Lord clapped back again do not tempt it is said do not it is written do not tempt the Lord thy God and in saying the Lord thy God he was letting the devil know that the Lord and Jesus himself was the devil's God In another example of prophetic clapback, as demonstrated by the Master, when they arrested Jesus and they were asking him a lot of questions, for the most part he was silent. And for his accusers, it was worse, or arguably worse, when he was silent. But eventually he did say something, a prophetic message that they would never forget. So in Luke 23, starting at verse 63, Now the men who were holding Jesus in custody were mocking him and beating him. Bad move. And they blindfolded him and were asking him, saying, Prophesy! Who is the one who hit you? They wanted a prophecy, huh? And they were saying many other things against him, blaspheming. When it was day, the council of elders of the people assembled both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to their council chamber, saying, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. If I tell you, you will not believe. There's some people you don't need to answer because they won't believe it anyhow. And they'll try to come up with something else. And if I ask a question, you will not answer. But from now, and yes, this is a clapback. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of God. Or correction at the right hand of the power of God. I say again, starting taking it from the very top. Jesus said unto them, those who were mocking him, those who were beating him, if I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask a question, you will not answer. So Jesus already knew. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God.
that was a scary thought. The person you're persecuting will one day be your judge. Now we all have to give an account to the Lord. And we can point to people and say, oh man, I wouldn't want to be that person standing in front of Jesus. Again, we all have to give an account of ourselves to the Lord. But can you imagine being one of those men who struck Jesus and then seeing him in all his glory? Can you imagine being Caiaphas, the high priest, and then seeing Jesus? John was one of Jesus' apostles. At the Last Supper, John was resting on Jesus' bosom. But in the book of Revelation, when John saw Jesus in his glory, John fell at his feet as though dead. Can you imagine these men? And sure, you're not in the same boat. So even if Jesus spoke about him sitting at the right hand of God, they still persisted. And they all said, Are you the Son of God then? And he said to them, Yes, I am. And by saying, I am, that harkens back to when the Lord told Moses, when Moses said, Who shall I say sent me? When the Lord was sending him to um, Egypt. Tell him I am that I am. So they asked the Lord a question. He answered them. And even though he gave them a prophetic clapback, which was a warning, they still persisted. Then they said, What further need do we have of testimony? For we have heard it ourselves from his own mouth. So they're looking for Jesus to say something that they keep could Jesus cause to crucify him? But a prophetic clapback. Zedekiah hit Micaiah. Micaiah gave him that clapback that he would find out <laughs> about the Holy Spirit on the day that he is hiding, that Zedekiah would be hiding in a room. Jesus gave the devil some clapbacks to let him know he's not going to bow to an inferior power. He's not going to worship a creation. And with those men who are accusing Jesus, he let them know he was going to be sitting at the right hand of the power of God. So where would they be? They would be in front of him getting judged. So two versions of the prophetic clapback. When a prophet says something that is out of turn because the Lord didn't authorize a prophet to release the information, and it could be embarrassing information, then the other clapback is when a prophet gives a persecutor or persecutors information that They truly do not want to receive. So that wraps it up regarding the prophetic clapback. Be careful who you come against. Be careful who you come against. They may give you something you don't want to receive. God bless you. Jesus is Lord.